Hi everyone. <clears throat> I'm not nervous at all. <laughs> uh, my name is Serin Shim. Uh, I pray that God will speak through my testimony and that God will hide me and reveal Christ to me. Uh, when I started to write my testimony, God reminded me of this verse. This is the verse that I always think of that explains my life. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27 through 29. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. Because I am the foolish and the weak and the low and despised, God chose me to be His child, and that's why I can only boast in Him. Uh, to begin with, I was born in a Christian family with faithful parents and one older sister. When my mom had my sister, she just became a Christian, so she prayed for her to be a pretty girl. And God answered her prayer, and she came out so pretty. <laughs> yeah, she... She was pretty. <laughs> but when she had me, she was on fire for, for God, evangelizing everyone around her. So she just prayed one thing for me, to be filled with the Spirit. And when I was born, I only came out Spirit-filled. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty now, but not so pretty, but just, just Spirit-filled. My Bible says you have not because you have not. Before I went to elementary school, I love to stay at church and I love talking to Jesus all the time because I thought he was my best friend. The only book I read was children's Bible, so if you talk about any childhood cartoon or movie, I cannot relate to any of that because I didn't watch any of the cartoon but read the children's Bible only until it all worn out. <laughs> I was always full of joy because I knew nothing but Jesus. I knew I had been saved and the Holy Spirit was within me even as a kid because my prayers were powerful even though I was young. I experienced God answering my prayers and worked through them. Um, if I may recall one testimony, my preschool teacher was praying for pregnancy and I would lay my hand over her belly and pray for her as a kid every day. And one day she got pregnant and she didn't share this with anyone. And the next day we met, I told her, I think I don't have to pray for you anymore. So she was surprised. I, I was like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but after I entered elementary school, I experienced a whole different world. When I talked about Jesus to my classmates, they thought I was weird. I was always the one excluded in the class, um, but I was still full of joy because first, I was not smart enough to understand what it means to be an outcast. I had zero nunti. I still have zero nunti. <laughs> and second, <laughs> and second, Jesus, Jesus was still my friend, so I couldn't care less. Uh, but later, I started to be aware of my surroundings. And when I entered middle school and the stage of puberty, I didn't like or I was hurt by looking weird or different. So I started to change so that I can fit in the world. I acted like one of them and talked like one of them and lived like one of them. Uh, I was never high like some of you mentioned in your testimony, <laughs> but I chose to turn from God to survive in the world. It felt like Jesus was not enough. I knew God was there but I didn't want to live as a Christian because it didn't seem to help me at all. It was the first time for me to realize that it is not easy to live as a Christian without comprom compromising in this world. But in my ninth grade, she just walked into my life again. I got closer to my friends at church. We started to hang out at church more often just because we didn't have place to hang out without paying money. And we ended up in a worship team. And one day, as we were standing in a circle and praying together, I saw all my sinful memories flash before me, and I started to tear up and cry. 
and God gave me the impression that He loved me in spite of all my sins and that He has forgiven me. And I felt like I was born again. And then I started to walk by the Spirit again, and He helped me with me with my academics too. I was in 27th place out of 45 in my class, and I became second place the next semester. Uh, then I went to Haven Christian School in my 10th grade, where I could really enjoy my walk with Jesus with no shame. It felt like everything was back on track, but God never ever let me in comfort zone. After graduating from Haven Christian School, I went to the States for college, and things got darker just like when I entered elementary school. It was a whole different world. When I talked about Jesus to classmates, they thought I was weird. And I got involved in a big rumor at Hanningyue Korean Church in the States. So I started to going through a sad, traumatizing hard time. All the friends I pray for every night and share the gospel with left me believing the rumor. I was all alone without any friend and I cried literally every day. Uh, I prayed to God, but it seemed like He didn't care. It was the second time for me to realize that it is not easy to live as a Christian without compromise in this world. I prayed, God, all I did to her was to pray for her and is this what I get? And God was like, yes. <laughs> Four years in the States was full of events that suffocated me and made me cry every single day. I even lost 14 kilos in one month and never gained back until I came back to Korea. And I was heavily addicted to shopping <laughs> to relieve stress and loneliness. So when I came back to Korea after graduating from Indiana University, I honestly didn't want to challenge myself or break through in my spiritual life because I was just so tired. I was like, God, just leave me alone. Do I have my family here? Yes. Do I have my friends here? Yes. Do I have my church that doesn't traumatize me? Yes. I was relieved. But God was like, no. Nah. He sent Steve to my life and put us together. <laughs> God walked into my life again through my relationship with Steve. Steve was God's vessel in his plan to challenge me and restore my passion for God. When we were praying for our marriage, we struggled a lot on which church to settle after we get married. Steve insisted on attending Saving Grace together because he loves Saving Grace and he is the founding member with Pastor Paul and Samonim. I didn't want to leave Chungshin Church either because I was born and raised there. That was my church for all of my life for 26 years. And I remember what happened when I attended other, church, other churches in the States. And Saving Grace is an international setting which looks so similar to them. I desperately and frantically refused to move to Steve Church, which is Saving Grace, because I was afraid as all the bad memories from the past flashed before my eyes. And since I have been committed to one church throughout my life, it was a big transition for me to attend Saving Grace. I understood it was biblical for a woman to follow her husband, but Jungshin was my family and it meant everything in my spiritual life. I was a sister and a daughter to everyone at Jungshin, and everybody knew me. They were the only spiritual family I knew. Uh, leaving, <laughs> leaving Jungshin Church was the last thing I could think of, but God gave peace in my heart about attending Saving Grace after the wedding, so I became a member of Saving Grace. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Saving Grace's message is very different from what I have been hearing at Jungshin, and I believe God is reve revealing various facets of Himself to me. And most importantly, God healed my scars from the Hanningue, the Korean church, through Saving Grace. During the retreat last time, the Holy Spirit led me to pray for healing and He took me to Indiana where all that happened as, as, as I was praying. I was shaking with fear when he took me there. My dorm room, apartment that I lived in, 
every corner of the street on the campus where I walked crying so hard. Uh, he told me I was there beside you. And I looked up and he was there. I was holding his hand and he took me to every place where I, where I was gripped in fear and removed all the scars. Uh, and you know what? <laughs> I'm going back to Haven Christian School now as a teacher. <laughs> Do you see the cycle? Like scar restoration, Haven, scar restoration, Haven. <laughs> now I really enjoy my cell group, Mark and Jane, Jin and Shine and Roa. Mark and Jane are amazing leaders, and Jin and Shine and Roa are so cute. <laughs> They certainly help me feel at home at Saving Grace. And many other brothers and sisters I got to know here helped me overcome the fear of adjusting to international community. So I'm so thankful to everyone for welcoming me with such love. And of course, <laughs> the highlight of my week is leaders Zoom meeting every Monday. <laughs> All the leaders, would you agree with me? <laughs> I can <laughs> I can't wait for leaders Zoom every week and I'm so grateful to be a part of this body of Christ. I know this is the season where God is broadening my spiritual horizon and I'm going into even a deeper level of relationship with Him. He never let me stay in comfort zone and He never leaves me alone. He always rebukes me and guides me into His way. He chose the weak and foolish like me to display His power. I was never cool or likable or even smart, but now He has placed me where I could never imagine myself to be. Me as an elementary kid, I would never imagine future me going to university in the States or studying for masters at Yonsei or marrying a wonderful man. <laughs> I'm so humbled by this undeserved grace and now I boast in my weaknesses. Now I would like to close my testimony with this scripture, Psalms chap uh, chapter 23 verse 5 to 6. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. So, I've known Steve for, for, for a long time, and uh, he's like my son, you know, and uh, I've known all his weaknesses, his, his strength, so when I, um, so honestly, when I, when, he, when I heard that he met a, a real a, a girl that he really, really, um, He, he, he found her to be very, um, like, he was like, oh, Pastor Paul, she's amazing. Oh, man, she's this, 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 and that, this, and that. But I was just like, whatever, man, whatever. <laughs> you guys will probably break up anyways, you know. <laughs> but but when, I, when, when I met her, I was, like, really, I was, like, really surprised. Like, she was, like, filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I, I felt Christ's radiance. I, I saw that she was truly a, a child of God, that she knew that she was loved by God and that she loved God so much, right? It was, it was, it was my wife and I, we had, we had dinner that day, right? At, 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 this, at, at the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was before. Oh, anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. So, and I was, I was really happy for Steve, you know, and then they were going out. And then, and then one day, Steve tells me, hey, Pastor Paul, you know, I think, uh, man, I, 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 I think, I think we, might, we might break up. I go, why? Because, you know, she, she, she doesn't want to come to saving, come to her church, you know? If she don't come, we're done, right? And I felt such a big pudam. I was like, dude, Steve, it, dude, wait, man, it's, it's okay, man. Like, he said, no, 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 no. She got to come here. I'm like, if, 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 that, if, that, if that don't happen, I'm like, I can't, I can't continue. I was like, of course, inside, I was so touched, you know? <laughs> Right, he's been with for, for for a long time. He's been so she's been so faithful to me because he's faithful faithful to God, right? 
And I was like, man. So I prayed. I actually, I actually fasted and prayed, right? That they'll, they'll get back together. It took about like a week, right? And then they were back together, you know? And then now it was about Zedian making a breakthrough to come here. And she made some breakthroughs after breakthroughs after breakthroughs. She'll come and visit us every now and then, right? She'll come visit us every, 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 now, every now and then, you know? But, like, she didn't have the assurance that she actually could leave, leave her, her home church that she grew up in and come here and settle here. She, had, she just had no, she had no clue how she was going to do this. Like, you know what I you know, it's just, just a thought. It's, it, it just scared her. And when she, after she come visit, I, I bet it, it scared her even more because of, of her, her, your memory back in the States, right? But man, you know, I think it was like the, the last leaders which we had, right? Was that, was that before marriage? The, before we got married, we had, we, had, we had a retreat, right? Was it before, before the marriage? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. It was before, before, before the wedding, right? Was it, was it, was it before the wedding? Yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there, like, you, you made a breakthrough, right? Didn't you? Am I wrong? I, I felt like we had a leaders retreat at that joy house. Just did those leaders. It was maybe about 20 of us, right? Yeah, yeah. There, you made a breakthrough. And said his mother, man, bless her heart, man. She's so good to us. She, man, she, 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 she's such an encouraging to me especially, right? She really encourages me. and She's such a wise woman. And she says, like, you know, but there's many mothers here that, that you know, like, like you know, Bella's mother is encouraging to me, you know, Sam's mother, Jeff's, you know, they, but, you know but her mother is so encouraging, you know, and, and uh, it was just, yeah. But it was at that retreat where she made a breakthrough, I believe, right? Yeah. And then from then on, she just having more peace and peace and peace about coming here. And, and she came in. She came in like, the first day she came in, man, it was just like, it's like she was just, just, like, just, like, just like part of the family. You know, like we didn't see any, we didn't see any discomfort from her. Like we didn't see any kind of reservation, you know, nothing. She was just, maybe, maybe it's, it's her, her vibrant personality, right? <laughs> maybe inside, maybe you're a little nervous, right? But, but still, like more she came, now she just like, she's in like Flynn, right? Amen? Amen, all right? Yeah, so, you know, thank you for taking this. It was, it was, a, it was a big step for it to actually come to our church. And, you know, thank you for obeying God's command. Right, following your husband, right, and, and you're here, and God's gonna bless your marriage, right, amen. And and I want to say, a lot of people here they look up to Stephen Tatum because the first one to get married, right? I mean, right, isn't it, right, right, like in the house, right? Yeah. So like, you wanna also get married? Too, right? <laughs> yeah. Of course, man. Right, Y'all get married. Come on now, you know. Okay, okay, yeah, amen. Praise God. So I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have a, I don't have a scripture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, all the girls, can you please come up and pray for her? All right? Yeah. Yeah. Father, we thank you for our sisters heading um, for the life that you have given to her. And Lord, that from birth, uh, you have been with her. Uh, you have reassured her of the love that you have for her, God. And Lord, that through every single um, place that you have brought her to, uh, Lord, you are always by her side. Uh, and Lord, we know that that will never change. Uh, Lord, that wherever she goes from this point on, uh, Lord, that you are always leading her. Um, Lord, that she can always depend on you. Um, and Lord, that she will have the joy of salvation to be her strength. 
Um, so we pray and we bless our sister's heading. Lord, would she continue to be a blessing to everyone around her, um, to her new school, um, that she would be a blessing to her students, to her coworkers, to this house. Um, and Lord, that you have brought her to this place um, to be a blessing in the same way that she has been blessed um, and she has been loved. Uh, so Lord, would you strengthen her? Would you... Um, Give her uh, your loving kindness and, Lord, um, the assurance that uh, you will never leave her side. Um, so we thank you uh, for her life. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you will do through Tedding and through um, her and Steve's marriage. Um, and, Lord, that you would be a blessing onto their family as well. Uh, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.